Welcome to the shop. Today we have a treat for you. We are combining woodworking with art. My wife did invade my workshop and asked me if I can help her work on an art project. So I agree. This is an example of how versatile this trade can be. Not only you can make useful things, but also you can beautify your home by making art using scraps of wood and nothing else but your imagination. So stick around for a little more artistic video this week, but I think you're going to enjoy it and at the same time see how easy and rewarding woodworking might is. Additionally, as of Friday, July the 7th, we surpassed 500 subscribers. Thank you, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Our giveaway for this milestone will be an Amazon uh, Kindle Fire. So please watch our Friday video for details about this competition. If you have not subscribed already, please do subscribe. The channel is really devoted to everything do it yourself from car repair to woodworking to home projects. So we want you to be part of this experience. So stick around with us today and you're going to see how you can use your woodworking to build an art project and in the process build your woodworking skills as well. So I will see you at the end of the video. some scrap cedar um, that I decided to cut into different depth pieces to make a mosaic, a kind of a random cross cut against the grain mosaic for interest. And I've kind of arranged a pattern here with the heights. It is a an organized pattern but with kind of a disorganized flavor. Um, and what I'm going to do is mount it to a piece of wood so that it will hold the structure together. But before I do that, I'm going to choose different colors of either stain or paint to make each block stand out. Okay. So I want to give some color and contrast to each of the blocks, but I'm thinking that I want to create kind of an ombre, um, subtle change in color from dark to light. And what I'm using is just leftover stain from other projects. So to pick out the colors that I want to use, I've used a scrap piece of wood and kind of dabbled a little bit of each stain after mixing them onto the wood so I could see the colors in the, on the same type of wood and close together to see which ones I want to use. So I think I'm really liking this gray tone along with the medium brown and one of the two darker ones. Probably this one and this one that I'll use in graduating tone from dark to light. Um, and then the next thing I need to do is figure out how I want to apply the stains to each 
um, level of blocks that I have so that I've got a, a pattern uh, kind of forming um, from that dark to light shading. I'm probably going to dilute this gray a little bit since it is paint and not stain to make it a little bit more um, of a faded look so that it doesn't completely coat and cover the wood. I want to be able to see the grain. So what I've done here is I've laid out my pattern um, in, the, in the orientation that I want to keep it once it's finished. And then I've cut a piece of uh, backing that I'm going to use to mount them to. Before I do any of that, I have got to apply the stain. But what I was thinking to do is to use my backing to kind of carry over that ombre or dark to light shading underneath the sculpture that lays on top. So I've taken this and I've said approximately this corner I would like to be dark. The middle section diagonally I'd like to be the medium shade and then this top section would be the light or the gray shade that I've picked out. So I wanted to give myself an approximation of how much shading I would do for the dark corner and I transposed that mark onto this section. So this would be my dark section of the backing board. And then this top corner would be my light. So I flipped it over and made another mark. So this just gives me a guide when I'm staining the backing. But this is my dark, this is my medium stain, and this is my light. And as it starts to dry, I'll probably merge the two a little bit and do some um, shading to uh, make them meld one into the other. So even though it sits underneath these other blocks, it will kind of mimic what's going on on top. So this is the gray paint watered down to what, maybe a 50-50? Mm -hmm. To get the washed look that you're going for. And that's how it compares versus the plain. So here are all the pieces that she did the color wash with the gray on, ready, and they're drying. She's getting started on the backing. It's really just a wash designed to give it some color but to still allow the grain of the wood to show through. how the different sides of the wood based on the cut and how smooth the wood is mm -hmm. determines how much stain it absorbs. Right. Pieces, the blocks of wood are done for the middle.
While that's wet, why don't you go ahead and do the final color? Now on camera it seems like it's a little more delineated, you don't see quite as much as a blend, but in person you can see more of a blend here. I'm gonna, yeah, you can see it a little bit better there. And then she's going to get started on those last block pieces, uh, let this dry. You can see that accidents do happen, um, especially when you're staining, you have to be really careful. Um, in this particular situation, I had one fatality um, of my, my shoe, and too bad it's now pink and black. It was just pink, this one. Um, but you know, stain does stain everything. Uh, we did get a spot on the floor, we'll work on getting that up with some mineral spirits. Um, and it will come off eventually off of my foot. But uh, as you can see, I did get the rest of the pieces stained, this um, Kona color, dark color. And as it seeps into the wood a little bit more, and I'll wipe it off with a, a dry cloth, it will start to show a little bit more of the grain uh, coming through. Okay, so all the pieces have dried. Uh, we're working on a dry fit and just seeing how they fit together. Does it look like we expected? And we'll go from there. three-dimensional chessboard, isn't it? So then you have another one that goes down there? No, all I have is the corner left. So it's that corner then that you have. This one should go there. Yeah. 
why I keep you around. <laughs> Hand me the big bucks. if that one is the wrong orientation or not. It's a little more square than some of the others. That one and that one. I feel like this needs to be kind of rotated so it's more on point. Like this is kind of off point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the, the angles should line up. Now I've got them all laid out in place and I'm just going to lift them one by one and get them glued to the backboard.
I need to do a frame or you're still thinking about it? I haven't decided. Okay, so for now, it's going to dry and we'll go from there. This is the end result. We have not decided if we're going to put it on, in a frame or not yet, but it will most definitely hang from our wall. This is something that uh, it came out really, really nice, and we showed you enough detail that you can either use this same project or modify to fit your need. Definitely will not modify to fit your decor. This fits our decor. This past Sunday, April Wilkerson also posted a project utilizing some of the techniques you saw today in a much bigger scale. I had not seen her video until we actually finished filming our, our project, but I'm going to actually link that video there. April is an amazing woodworker and I hope you watch her video. It, it is really very good and shows you very different techniques and also that this can be scaled up, can also be scaled down. In any case, get in the shop, start using your tools, start cutting. Join us on Wednesday for a really interesting Wednesday show. I plan a lot of special things for Wednesday. If you did like this show and if you do like and you want to support our channels, please smash the like button. If you don't, the other button works as well. Be sure to subscribe so we can continue and provide more content to you. We do not ask any other form of support from our subscribers. I don't have a Patreon. I don't sell anything. All we need is your support in growing the channel and creating a good community. This is a totally family friendly channel. We try to have projects for everyone from uh, arts as you see today and we've done in the past to some craft things to auto repairs to virtually everything you can imagine. So please support us and thank you so much for your support so, so far. 500 surprise subscribers. Keep in mind I started with zero and of course no help from anyone else. Made mistakes in the way but I think we have grown together and I appreciate all of you that you have been here from the beginning. I will see you Wednesday and thank you so much for your support.